Al. All right, and then I'm just going to drop the community scan into the chat here. All right. All right, so before we get started, um, I just thought it would be helpful to go through what today is going to look like. Like I said, we're going to begin with Dave's introduction, then um, review the contents of the report, which was sent out via the Google group. So some of you might have seen that already. And then at the end, we are going to have this space where we hope you feel comfortable asking any, any questions you might have about the report contents sharing any reflections you might have or feedback that you, um, any feedback on the process or the report itself. Um, so if you have any questions during the presentation portion of the session, I invite you to add those to the chat and we'll refer back to those once we get to the discussion portion. And without further ado, I will hand it off to Dave, our executive director to get us started. Thank you, Barb. Hi everyone, it is really, really nice to see some, so many familiar faces. Uh, email just doesn't do it. And to be honest, Zoom is better, but it doesn't quite do it either. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person someday. But for today, it's great to see you. And um, so yeah, I'm Dave Ernst, I'm the Executive Director of the OEN. And um, just a, a, a quick few words to kind of frame this, uh, our community scan. If you're not familiar with our guiding principles, I put a link in the chat. Um, and um, the, the guiding principles are a description. Our, um, our steering committee a couple of years ago developed these guiding principles with the hopes that it could do a good job of, of describing us, you know, who we are and who we're trying to be. And if you look at those, I'm not going to read them to you or anything, but if you take a look at those guiding principles, if you haven't seen them before, there's a couple of things I just want to pull out and, and apply to today's session. Number one is just how important community is to us. It is at the core of everything that we do. It, it, it informs uh, what services we provide, uh, what information we provide or resources, professional development, everything, it, whatever we feel the community, what we hear from the community is needed to help you build your and support your, your open education programs. There's one other thing, though, that I want to point out that is really important about the principles and about the OEN is that we're also aspire to be very, this may sound strange, but human focused. We're not just an organization, we're a group of people. You'll, you'll notice one of the principles talks about how we're not just consumers of services. We're people who have, who need connections, we need support, um, we need people in our lives to help us do our work. And so this community scan, I feel like, is um, a nice representation of that. Number one, it's the voice of the community. And at the end, you're going to see um, some suggestions about kind of, uh, of um, operational changes that we could make or add or you know, strategies we can take on. Some of them are focused um, on the people and supporting the people. And, uh, again, not just providing services, but supporting you. And so I, I just want you to look for those two things today as Barb kind of talks through um, the results of this community scan. It's incredibly important. Feedback is always really important. We always appreciate hearing from you. You are the community. Um, the scan is just a nice way for us to organize that feedback and prompt you for it. Uh, and Barb has just done such a wonderful job of taking that feedback and structuring it for us. So I encourage you to per give us even more feedback today during this session and after the session is done always, of course. So, um, so again, thank you for being here and Barb, I'll pass it back to you. All right, thank you, Dave. And now's our time to dig into the report itself. I see the first link that I actually dropped in the chat was the community scan survey. So now you've got the community scan report link in there if you want to follow along. It's also posted on the community hub under the community news tab if you ever want to refer back to it. All 
right. So as you may have seen, many emails were sent out to the OEN Google group inviting all community members to uh, participate in that community scan survey, which was just a simple Google form. And a very big thank you, as we see here on the slide, for tolerating my David Rose gifts that I sent out on a number of occasions. Not sure how many Schitt's Creek uh, TV show fans we have on here, but I thought at the very least, um, David might inspire some of you all to participate or bring you a laugh or um, at least grab your attention if nothing else. So back in 2019, we received 69 responses or 68 responses to the community scan survey. And so my goal this year was to surpass that number. And I just want to say, as does David here, uh, a big thank you to you all for, for engaging with that survey because we did actually surpass that number and we had 84 members respond to the survey. Um, of those that responded, it was really neat because about a third of respondents indicated that they were new members. About a third said they had been a part of the OEN for one to three years, and then a third uh, indicated that they were long-term OEN members. And so it was a really great cross-section uh, that involved those different perspectives um, from the membership level. And then as you can see on the slide here, within that number 84, we had 69 different institutions represented as well as 12 consortia. Um, within those institutions, there were community colleges, R1 institutions, um, institutions from really all over the map. So once again, it was a really, a really great subsection. So thank you all for uh, the time you took to respond if indeed you did. Um, speaking of geography, that is a great segue into our next slide. And as you know, we are a global network. So we've got lots of dots here all over the US. The um, purple dots are our members and ally, uh, our institutional members and allied members. And the orange dots are um, members that are part of consortia that are part of the OEN. We've got people in Australia, one of which who is here today, Adrian, joining us. Like he said, he's an early bird, 5 a.m. over there. Um, and then we were really excited to welcome our first Canadian institutional member this year as well. All right, for the numbers portion of today's presentation, um, we're really excited because membership has grown um, by 115% since 2019. And I'd say a lot of that is due to the addition of our allied membership type. We are now at 224 members that represent over 1400 campuses, which is an increase once again of 42%, which is I think really impressive and exciting. Um, as for textbooks, we are up 42% from 2019. We surpassed 800 textbooks this summer, as you may have seen, and we're already at I didn't check the number today, but when I put this together, it was at 859. So that's just a testament to all of the hard work that you all are doing um, at your institutions. So thank you for that. All right, and now for my favorite part of the community scan, um, we had a question on the scan that was, what are three words that you would use to describe the OEN community? And um, this logo is built from people's responses. So as you can see, there are some really, really beautiful words on here that I think, um, and I'd love to hear my teammates thoughts on this, but I think it's really words that also represent how we hope to show up for you as an organization. Um, so that's really exciting to see. Um, we've got kind, innovative, welcoming, generous, support, helpful, growing, open, inclusive, collaborative, lots of great words on here. Um, this was also an exercise that we did in the 2019 community scan. And something interesting to note is that both in 2019 and in 2021, both supportive and helpful were the um, most two most popular words in um, the, the word cloud. Um, something else that I thought was interesting um, is there were some words that we made note of that were absent from the 2021 cloud, and those were words like um, new, hopeful, um, patient, broad, philanthropic, confusing, overwhelming, um, and efficient. So some of those are good words, but 
Um, very glad to not see words like confusing and overwhelming in there this year. Thought that was great. And then also just the lack of words like um, new and kind of that hopeful spin is maybe a testament to how we've been evolving over the past couple of years and perhaps um, moving from more startup mode to more established. So it'd be really interesting to hear during the discussion portion of today if these words also represent how you feel uh, or how you view the OEN. All right, so um, the main question, one of the main questions on the scan was, what are the key challenges that you face in advancing your open education initiatives? And there were quite a number of different responses. There were actually only three people out of that, um, out of those 84 who did not respond to this question. So you all had a lot to say about that and we really appreciate you sharing. Um, Despite kind of this wide range of responses, for the most part, we there were seven main challenges that really bubbled up from what you shared. And those were lack of money, time, and staff, which was, um, I'd say, far and away the, the most common answer, especially emphasizing that lack of time. Scaling OER initiatives, sustainability of OER materials and programs, tracking OER use and program data, high level decision making and leadership support during a pandemic, which is also a new one in 2021, as I'm sure you can imagine and have felt probably. Expanding publishing efforts and faculty resistance and competing priorities, priorities which we always know as a challenge. Um, these really pretty much overlapped with 2019's listed challenges with the exception of two, two that were different. One was the availability of books in 2019 and also next steps beyond the OTN. Now we're the OEN, but we were the OTN back then, as you know, uh, workshop. So kind of cool to see that um, those aren't necessarily challenges faced anymore. As we mentioned, we've got way more books um, and we've really kind of moved beyond that first workshop phase. And a lot of you are doing a lot more um, of a variety of initiatives with your programming. Um, so I think something to take away from the fact that we could kind of distill it down to these seven challenges is just that solidarity and the fact that many of you are facing similar things, similar roadblocks, and can really be that support for one another. Um, and then also the fact that many of these challenges have persisted across the years and do persist across institution and institution types. And so that really poses a great question for us in terms of as a community, how can we be creatively tackling these challenges and continuing to innovate in these spheres? Um, and really, I think the most exciting part of the scan was, you know, we're not here just to name the challenges, but we really wanted to hear from you about what are your ideas in how we can, um, both with you and in a supportive role, help address these challenges. So the, the technical question on the scan was, what do you wish the OEN offered to help you address these challenges? So. For that first one, um, there were some really great ideas. I'm not gonna read through all of these and some of you might've read these on the report, but I'll just kind of give you the, the highlights. With the lack of money, time and staff, um, a lot of people mentioned making connections between people, which I'm wondering also if that's kind of in our age of, of virtual meetings and being more isolated and some of us off campus. Um, so whether that be connecting faculty to one another who work in departments across institutions or across consortia, or whether that was um, connecting OEN members to one another, that was something that came up a lot. Also having more kind of plug and play resources available for you to use. So short videos, um, improving the usability of the community hub. And um, also needless to say, funding is a little tight these days. So offering a platform where people can share strategies for working on a shoestring budget or um, obtaining funding to support your OER initiatives. Um, the second one in the yellow square, um, my presenter mode is blocking what it says. Um, 
Uh -huh, yes. Yeah. So offering webinars and materials um, targeted at engaging different stakeholders, including students, um, offering workshops on how to best coordinate efforts across different support units. So thinking about all of the people on campus who can be allies in, in promoting OER. And then um, something that came up a lot with our consortial responses was sharing best practices for consortia on how to scale efforts across their member institutions. Sustainability of OER materials and programs, we know that is a big one. Um, this is one thing that came up as a popular um, perhaps webinar topic and also adding more resources available for you to use um, to the community hub. Um, also creating um, materials that focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion and accessibility. There was another part of the community scan that asked about topics that people were interested in professional development around or us developing more, res more resources on. And I would say that diversity, equity, and inclusion was far away um, the topic that people were requesting. So that's something that we're certainly keeping in mind as we move forward. Um, ideas for addressing faculty resistance and competing priorities. Um, a really great suggestion was putting together some case studies or just creating more faculty focused uh, materials in terms of what we post on the hub, what we use for our um, webinar topics, um, sharing resources and best practices for integrating OER adoption and creation into tenure track processes. Again, a lot of these did show up in our 2019 report as well. So we're excited to hear your ideas on how best to go about doing that. Um, increased availability of ancillary materials. That's something that we are excited that we have begun to add to the OTL in, within the past year, I believe. And so we'll continue to work on that. Um, and also kind of along that, the lines of, um, kind of along the lines with I said before, um, lack of funding, th thinking of different ways to incentivize faculty to engage with OER. And one of the ways that came up in a couple of different answers was designing certificates of completion or kind of other swag that we could provide to faculty who participate in workshops or grant programs perhaps to get them excited about participating. Um, in terms of challenges around tracking program data, uh, a big suggestion that came up a lot was expanding the functionality of the data dashboard, which Dave, I'm sure, um, Dave and I will be sharing more information about soon here, but that is something that's in the works already and hopefully gonna be rolled out within the next few months. Um, sharing documentation and best practices on how to collect, retain, and update um, OER usage data, which I'm not sure if anybody caught our office hours session that we hosted with the Rebus community last week, but we'll be sending out that link um, probably within the next couple of days. There were some really great case studies and suggestions that came out of that session. Um, and then offering webinars and trainings on how to best go about collecting data and then using that data for storytelling purposes. And then finally, um, challenges around publishing, expanding publishing efforts, um, providing kind of more structure around what does publishing look like from a time and financial investment perspective, and then also continuing with the <clears throat> publishing um, webinars, but perhaps in a more dis discipline specific way that targets uh, particular departments or faculty members. All right, and I'm going to turn it over to Dave now, who's going to talk about next steps. Great, thanks, Barb. Um, so another another one of our guiding principles has to do with action. So um, we, we don't attempt to be a think tank. We're we try, I think we try to we try to be an act tank. How's that? And so we're we want to take this feedback and we want to do something with it. That's our goal. That's the reason we collected is we want to hear from you about what we can do together as a community. So here are some next steps that um, 
we've looked at and decided uh, that we can do, or some of these already, thankfully we're you know, in process and we were already working on it. So I'm just gonna quickly go through these. Again, um, Barb mentioned the, the diversity, equity and inclusion lens. That was, that was far and above kind of the, um, what people said they wanted to be able to frame open education uh, in that vein of, of basically social justice. And instead of just affordability, um, to back out a little bit and actually look at it from a broader lens, which I think is really smart and we are working on that. You'll be seeing some, some uh, work on that in the, in the network and we hope you join us in that. The data dashboard is a piece that um, we have been spending an immense amount of time on. We're, almost ready to launch a new version of it, version 2.0. Um, you will see it demonstrated at the summit and then we will uh, we'll make some announcements soon, um, uh, but you'll see it demonstrated at the summit and hopefully rolled out soon thereafter. The goal of that, by the way, is that the dashboard was originally designed to manage the workshop process, you know, the OEM workshop. Um, and it did a good job of it, it does a good job of it. but. You all have so many other strategies that you use, other programs that you use. This should help you track that data as well and keep up to date on the data you need to kind of um, to show impact of your programs. I'm going to try to go faster on these part. Increase network opportunities. So here's the people part, right? I mean, we want to connect people with each other. This is the most important thing I think that we can do to help you talk to each other. Um, the, staff, the OEM staff are super smart people, but we don't have all the answers. Collectively in this community, um, I think we, we have most of them, or at least we can figure it out together. Reviving events programming. So when, the, when COVID hit, we shifted like everyone else. Travel suddenly stopped. Um, our programming models shifted as they had to. And so we're now looking at the, how to get back in the saddle and get back into having community conversations um, uh, online. So events programming, connecting more, um, and maybe in person, who knows? That's hard to tell at this point. Uh, and then the same with the next one, the PD um, professional development. Again, you're gonna see us ramping up that. We've heard loud and clear a need for that, both for faculty, for staff, for librarians, for um, institutional statewide leaders, all of those are things that we will be doing. Um, as Barb mentioned, lack of money was one of the issues we heard. So are there other things that you can do? One of the things we heard about were perhaps um, instead of financial rewards for participating in programs, maybe we can create some sort of a certificate or something that means something for those programs who don't have money for stipends and so on, that it still might mean something in say a faculty's promotion and tenure packet, maybe. Um, consortia are becoming increasingly, increasingly important members in the, in the community, the number of, of consortia are continue to grow. And so um, we wanna be able to play a role to connect them and help, help them share best practices of running um, consortia and having consortia um, help their members grow in their open education programs. And then last but not least, I'm looking at the community hub and improving its usefulness to you. Um, and, um, and, and I hope that you, I hope that you can find ways to get involved in all of these. This is, these aren't things necessarily that Sarah and Barb and Tanya and Karen and I are gonna do. Uh, these are things the community are going to do together. So I, I hope you stay involved and um, and help us with those. Barb. Thanks, Dave. And I appreciate that last point, especially. Um, stay tuned. Actually, this week, going back to that data dashboard point, I'm going to send out uh, an email to the Google group regarding questions that you all would like to include in the surveys that we're building um, or that you'll be able to build as a part of the data dashboard. So um, we're going to be using that Google group quite a bit to be soliciting input for things like the community hub and like the data dashboard. So I just keep your eye on that. 
Um, and then also make sure any of your colleagues are connected with that. If you do have any delegate spaces open, let me know. Because again, we'd love all of your feedback and I'm happy to, to add any of your colleagues who might not be accessing that yet. Um, all right, and yeah, just needless to say that we're really excited to dig into all of these great ideas that you had um, and these recommendations of yours and just can't thank you enough for all of those great suggestions. Um, I'm going to end the recording now. Here we go. Um.